Um, a lot of people got interested in this uh, over the last few years because of the because of the controversy, and I just want to finish off, there's only two or three more slides. I want to show you what's actually going on right now, and this paper will come out in two weeks' time in Nature Scientific Reports. And it's done by um, uh, Albrecht Hase, who is a quantum optics man, a real proper physicist <coughs> with, who knows about quantum optics. And he decided, when he moved to Trento to follow his wife, who's a theoretician, he said, I want to figure out this olfaction thing because it sounds interesting. And he built an imaging setup to find out what's going on in the brain of the insect. And it's amazing that he succeeded. I mean, he had no experience of anything yet in that field. And I'm going to show you a trace. So this is the brain of a bee. Now, bees are the sort of Einsteins of the, of the insect world. You know, they have enormous brains compared to flies. The, the fly brain would be about this size. This is the bee brain, like gigantic. And they're geniuses, OK? And of course, you may have noticed we have the same taste as bees, right? I mean, we like roses. They like roses. Right? Anytime you go and smell a rose, there's a bee in there, right? <laughs> so, so how do the actual brain cells respond to odorants? So what, what, what you do is you measure the response. Um, hang on. So these are the two guys, Albert Hase and Marco Paoli, uh, who, who did most of the work. So they measure the response of the, the cells in the, uh, in the little lobe of the brain that is connected to a particular receptor. So this, this clump of cells here is connected to one receptor, and this clump of cells is connected to another receptor. And they measure what's going on in those two things, uh, uh, an optical signal, which tells you what the receptors are responding to. Now let me show you the trace. So um, they put a puff of an H odorant, and both the green and red go up. Okay. Now they put a puff of a deodorant, and one goes up and one goes down. OK? And now I rest my case. <laughs> um, this is going to be really, really hard to explain any other way. And in fact, when you look at the whole picture of all the different glomeruli, the blue ones are going down with octanol, let's say. The red ones are going up. And if you do it with benzaldehyde, you get a different picture. And if you do it with acetophenone, you get a different picture. And if you do it with isopropanol, you get a different picture. So this paper will come out in two weeks' time. And, uh, and uh, I think we'll, 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 in my opinion, will be, it's not the definitive answer, but it's certainly a watershed in this whole uh, game. <laughs>